All apologies, guys. I'm going to start this video with the very end of the video. I answered the question that I didn't get answered during the video, and that is on this very special engine, the side of the head that has the most material, the extra two millimeters of cooling fin, goes on the back plate side of the engine and not on the snoot side of the engine. All of that will make sense in the following video, so stay tuned. Good evening, guys, and welcome to the hobby room. Uh, I don't usually film my uh, videos in the evening, but I had a less than productive day, so I felt I had to do something to, to make myself productive. I'm, I'm chuckling because now this is take three, not because I've made a mistake, but because silly me didn't put my phone on airplane mode and I've gotten two minutes into this video on several occasions and my phone has gone off. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. On the bench tonight we have something rather special. Uh, for all the things that Tamiya is known for, glow engines and glow cars, nitro cars are not one of them. Um, there have been a couple of exceptions and one of those exceptions is the uh, 1 8th scale TGX. Now, that's what this engine is for. Uh, now, an interesting thing, and I don't exactly know the, the ins and outs of everything, but as I understand it, an engine can't be shipped um, <clears throat> unless it's by the manufacturer from Japan to the United States um, as a complete running engine. It must be shipped over in parts. Um, I'll show you the rest of the contents of this box. It is merely a parts. This is not an assembly manual. It's simply a parts breakdown. And we've got a pretty nifty little sticker pad. Um, so either way, apparently these can't come into the States uh, as vintage kits with their engines assembled. The engines have to get disassembled in the process. So I have been charged with um, Putting this engine back together. It's brandy spanky new, so there shouldn't be any terrible complications. Um, it appears that the gentleman who took it apart, um, whom I, I happen to, I don't want to say no personally, but I, I, know, I know of him, I know who he is. Um, he appears to have taken it apart in such a manner that uh, he, he, he took as little off of it as necessary to get the job done, which is, which is good. So um, we're going to break apart these boxes, and, um, or these baggies, rather, and see what we got. So yeah, I know, I know surprisingly little about the TGX. Um, I know it's 1-8 scale. <clears throat> I know that the um, exact car that this you know, engine came out of, the, the kit that this engine came out of was um, bodied as an NSX, so that's actually pretty, pretty nifty. Um, so let's see, let's see what we have here. So it looks like we have a, a piston liner and a sleeve, and that's got, somebody's even drawn, I'll see if it shows up on the camera. Uh, this, you can see a little black sharpie. They've drawn a uh, an index mark to show how the how this uh, sleeve was indexed in the head. So that's pretty cool. Whoever whoever took this apart was paying attention and very thorough. And being as how I know who took this engine apart in Japan, um, yes, they are absolutely. He is absolutely known for being um, fastidious and thorough. Uh, to the nth degree. So we're going to go ahead and see what we can do about sliding this dude together. Now I see that we've got a main bearing here, a nut and a washer. Uh, again, this is, you're watching me do this particular type of engine, uh, or this particular engine, for the very first time. You can see we've got a nice ball bearing in there. Um, I'm going to use after I knock everything over, a couple drops of my uh, book bearing, high-speed bearing oil. I just like this stuff, and it, it seems as though as long as it's all taken apart, 
what better time than the present? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to reinstall um, the thrust washer and the nut to kind of keep everything at least semi sort of somewhat in place. And we'll go ahead and we'll drop this sleeve in. And I'm wondering, you know what, I'm going to do this my, my regular way of dropping the piston in first. Of course, making sure that the, um, the nylon guide is in place uh, to protect the cylinder liner, which we'll install here in a moment. So we've got the piston on its wrist pin. Yes, there we go. Okay. And once again, um, we'll put a couple drops of oil on that union between the piston and wrist pin um, that will you know again only serve to keep us in better standing moving forward even if this model is only a shelf queen I don't actually know what the owner um, intends to do with this model whether he's going to sell it on um, whether it's going to be a shelf queen whether it's going to be collected in its box and never assembled um, but like I said, when you bought this, when you bought this kit in Japan, this engine would have been in this box assembled. So basically what I'm doing is I am just doing the reassembly so that he can put the box together as it would have come brand new from Tamiya. So we'll do that. We'll get all the hardware out of here and we're going to bring the piston up to top dead center and with any luck will be able to, with relative ease, yes, okie dokie, I'll take them, I'll take the easy ones when I can get them, we'll be able to drop that um, sleeve right on in, and you can feel that little bit of pinch right at the top, very, very normal. Now, once again, I'm going to take a little bit of my high-speed bearing oil, and since this is, well, I do, I do this whether it's a ring dungeon or not. But I put just a half a drop of oil between the sleeve and uh, the piston. You don't really need to worry about that, them sticking together as they are, in fact, um, dissimilar metals. Um, but, again, why not just go ahead and be thorough for the sake of being thorough? So now we'll go ahead and we'll see about dropping the head on. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll drop the head on. And you know what? I want to see if there's a, a breakdown. The head has more meat on one side of it than it does the other. And I don't know if that beefier side of the head um, favors um, the front of the engine or the back. So let's see. Let's check our manual, something I almost never do and see if it shows a photo. Of course, everything here is in Japanese. Uh-huh, uh-huh, okay. And it would appear that, <laughs> okay, it would appear that the, the little uh, card here shows the cylinder head as being symmetrical, which, um, is not the reality of what we have here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that one online. So since I don't know for certain the orientation of this head, um, it's irrelevant to the um, uh, combustion chamber, but it may be relevant to another part of the kit, which is to say that it may interfere with the starter, which we'll be putting on here in a moment. Um, it may interfere with the starter. It may interfere with um, some other piece of the kit. So I'm just going to take two of the four head bolts in the meantime um, and run them in. And you can see I'm not even using the handle of the screwdriver. I'm just running them until they touch. That way we have the head in place. And there's your nice little pinch at the top. 
So we are well and good there. Now, time for backplate. After that runs away for at least the second time. All right, so this stands straight up and it looks as though this odd shape that we have here juts up into that corner. So I'm gonna take, once again, um, I'm doing something that <clears throat> I generally don't do. Uh, I generally take gaskets and I use a, a copper RTV on them. This is a pristine original gasket. I don't wanna do that. Uh, plus it is not exactly my place. Ah, I see what goes on here. So I'm gonna index the cylinder, the crankshaft at bottom dead center, and I'm gonna index this at bottom dead center. And lo and behold, they, they key together. Very nice. And wow, that just worked itself right on up now, didn't it? All right, so what I do when I'm installing these, um, or components like this that are gasketed. Um, you saw I just ran a single bolt in and I did it, again, only with my fingertips. Um, and that is because I am going to use a tiny amount of blue Loctite. And when I say a tiny amount, guys, I'm talking about nearly immeasurable. In fact, I will take much, much less than one drop and then I will split that one drop between two pieces of hardware. Um, it's not so much that it's necessary because these were never factory assembled with thread locker. It's more to do with the fact that um, I'm putting my name on this, my name is attached to this, and I don't want it backing out because that's not the type of work that I do. So I put a, a micro minuscule amount of thread locker um, because, you know, again, I do have an inch pound wrench out in the garage. Of course, I'm a little shaky because it's late in the evening and I've had a lot of energy drink. Um, so now we've got two of the bolts in with thread lock. And that means that I'm going to back out that one bolt that I had originally put in. And that will allow me to go through the same process of putting a micro drop of Loctite on one bolt and then sharing it across two and then we can drop those in place <clears throat> and run them in so I'll definitely be curious to see I'd like to I'd like to get my hands on a TGX runner at some point and have a go um, I don't know how Tamiya engines ever stacked up, you know, so to speak, in, in the grand scheme of things up against other engine manufacturers um, of that period or even, you know, by current day standards. Uh, I don't know if these were particularly good engines. I don't know if they were, well, I guess that's the moral of the story. I, I just simply don't know um, what, uh, what quality level these engines were or what power level uh, they produced. Um, I would imagine given that it's a Tamiya product, it's probably, you know, a high power product. And um, I see now that I have made a very small mistake. Not a big deal at all. Very easily rectified. I'm going to back these four bolts out. Um, as I was looking through the exhaust port, I see that there is actually a um, lubrication port in the side of the piston. Bit unusual. Um, not something you see commonly in an engine, but there's a lubrication port for the needle bearing in the side of the piston, and it didn't seem right that it was facing the exhaust port. And as I look at the exploded view, um, in fact, it, um, it does not face the exhaust side, which I guess would stand to reason. You would want that fresh fuel running into it um, rather than exhausting out through it. So 
I guess that makes good sense, and it probably, you know, it will no doubt would affect back pressure um, and draw greatly. So we'll slide that out of the way. <coughs> we'll slide the little interlock for the starter out of the way. And I suspect that what we're going to be able to do is lift that <coughs> ring or lift that rod right up off the top of the piston. Nope. No, we are not. We have to actually lift the sleeve. So special little treat for you guys. I don't know how long this video is going to go on for. Um, there's a reason I do things the way that I do is you actually get to see me build this engine twice. Um, reason being is there isn't enough slop in the rod to allow for me to simply pull it off of um, the pin and spin the piston and rod assembly 180 with the liner in place. Now, actually, funny enough, that speaks highly you know, to the construction of this engine because on, on a lot of engines, there's plenty of room. There's plenty of slop. We, you see, we just slid our liner out. There's plenty of slop that allows for this to happen. And um, that's just not the case on this one. So, there we go. I love these Crescent brand micro pliers. <coughs> they're spring loaded and they make life easy and they're just good. And they're just good for just so many reasons. All right. So we're, ba we're back in business there. So that's, now we have, yes, complete closure. That's good. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the sleeve back on. And I suspect that since we were all pre-lubricated, yep, that's gonna slide right on back in the way it ought to, and it did. And now the he cylinder head will drop right back into place. There we have that. What is this, guys? A, a, a three-minute detour, maybe, in the entire video? And again, that's why I sort of um, loosely assemble sub-assemblies um, on occasion when it's allowable, especially when it's an engine that I'm unsure of. Because uh, again, I've, I've never, I've never seen this, you know, particular machining characteristic. Um, before. So now I'm going to align the gasket <coughs> as we had it before. Um, we've got our interlock here that goes through that. And I see that that is bronze bush. Now there's no way our thread lock has cured in this time. Um, especially since um, thread lock cures in the absence of oxygen, not in the presence of oxygen. Um, so since we didn't have it starved of oxygen for very long, there's no way it's set up. Um, plus they didn't use it in the first place. So I'm supremely not worried about it. Um, but as I was about to say, I'm looking at the back of this starter um, output shaft here and um, I'm noticing that it's bronze bushed, so we're gonna put a little drop of uh, oil there also. Kind of surprised to see that that component of it is bronze bushed, whereas the rest of the engine is ball raced or, or needle bearing raced. Um, because this output shaft will, by virtue of the fact that it's hooked to the crankshaft, will be spinning at the same RPM as the engine. So we'll go ahead and we'll just give it the tiniest little drop of oil. And when I say tiny, I mean to tell you, I put a drop on there and I'm wiping half of it off. I just want to make sure that it is present. Here's our two head bolts that we have omitted in the meantime until I can do a quick Google search and figure out exactly which orientation um, what the cylinder head orientation is. And I'm now seeing 
um, I'm understanding, I should say, as I take this apart, that we've got a smooth shaft here, which means that that little um, <coughs> hexagonal piece that jumped out that had the bearing in it, that will no doubt be a one-way bearing that will clamp onto this shaft. Um, and um, actually some light oil is completely fine for one-way bearings. That's, I, I've spoken to um, one-way bearing manufacturers and they actually recommend you know, a very, very light oil. Um, and that, that doesn't interrupt its operation or adversely affect its operation. Um, let's see, now do we have all right, so we know we've got our one-way bearing headed in the right direction. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing uh, with our blue thread lock, sharing it across bolts. But since there is only one way to install this and nothing is in question, uh, I, have no, I have no qualms about going ahead and putting our thread locker on. There's no gasket here, so there's no, there's no third piece to fall out of place. It's simply my clumsy thumbs and two pieces. So here goes one, only as snug as I can get it with my fingertips on the shaft. Here goes two. And it's, it's funny, I see FS15 on a 1-8 scale buggy. God, times have changed because, um, yeah, this probably was a rip snort and screamer in its day but probably a far cry from what we see today i'm i'm again i've been doing nitro airplanes since i can remember um but the whole nitro car thing is kind of new and in fact i'd venture to say i've done more nitro boats over the course of my life than, than cars so you know the sizing the sizing of an engine as compared to the um, scale weight and purpose of a car platform is somewhat new to me you know not not foreign by any stretch of the imagination but I wouldn't exactly call myself uh, an expert at sizing engines um, per application Sorry you guys hear that jingling. I keep forgetting to um, shut off notifications. So there we go. There's all of our pop on our uh, Tamiya FS15 engine. So let's move on to what's next. And that will be our carburetor. So I'm going to go back to the technical drawing. And just so you, don't guys, you guys don't think I'm reading a manual, it is literally just... An ex you know an exploded view so I see now that the um, servo horn is on the standard size that you would have it on um, a model airplane or something which I guess would be which would be the left side of the engine as viewed from uh, a seated driver or pilot now I am going to take this o-ring and once again same old high-speed bearing oil um, Maybe, I, maybe I'm just a little bit crazy with this stuff, but I just sort of feel as though, um, you know what, why, why break the trend now? Let's put one drop of blue thread lock, and um, this, act, this engine actually still has all of the original packing oil all over it, so this is as fresh. This is as farm fresh as they come, guys. Um, and also, I wanted to make mention that we are using Tamiya brand screwdrivers, which are, of course, J-I-S. How many I's did I put in there? They are J-I-S, um, which would explain why we are not damaging any of them or having any of them jump. And I'm supremely confident. And I'm, I'm going to move the engine over to you guys here in a second. Um, that we're getting this all put back together without marring up any of the hardware. So there will, really won't be any visual um, uh, you know, I got caught off by an optical illusion. That cylinder head 
does have the equal amount of meat on both sides. Okay, cool, that's, that's good news. So then with that being the case, does it? God, that is so bizarre. It's got ever so slightly, well, let me, let me pull out a set of calipers and look at this real quick. I'm just curious at this point to see, oh, and of course my calipers are not in their case. Not the end of the world. I will, I will mic that out and figure out the orientation of the cylinder head. Um, but basically, that's it. You guys have seen it. The, uh, the whole engine is back together. The pull starter is on. The head's in place, and even with two um, bolts just run in, we've got good good compression, and uh, there we have it. So thank you guys for stopping in and giving a watch on a bit of an impromptu video. Again, don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, um, do all that stuff, and um, thanks for visiting the hobby room, guys. Have a great night.